As always at our convention, I don't know, I guess we could, we could have a convention, uh, Commissioner Troxler, if you didn't come, but I can tell you something would be missing. It's always an honor for us to have with us North Carolina Commissioner of Agriculture, Steve Troxler. All of you know how closely this organization works with the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, our colleges, land grants. Um, we, we appreciate the close working relationship that we have with the commissioner and his staff. We almost talk on a weekly basis, not on a daily basis. He's certainly busy. But I can tell you, as Senator Tillis said, Steve Troxler has built one of the strongest departments of agriculture in the country, and we don't have a harder working or a better commissioner of agriculture in the United States than Steve Troxler. I know most of them, I know a lot of them, but we don't have one any better. Commissioner, we're glad to have you here with us this morning. We thank you for what you do, not only for agriculture, but we thank you for your service to the people of North Carolina. Let's welcome our Commissioner of Agriculture, Steve Troxler. Good morning. Welcome to Guilford County. Uh, there were a lot of people that came from a lot further away to get here than I did, but I couldn't get here this morning uh, due to a wreck on 29, so I had to go to the west side of the city to even get uh, an 18 mile trip here, so I apologize for, for being late, but it was the best I could do. Larry, I was thinking on the way up here this morning, uh, this is the 15th time that I have addressed the uh, convention. Uh, twice as a candidate and now 13 times as a uh, commissioner and there's one constant that has been there every time I've been here. There are issues in agriculture that have got to be solved. Uh, and I don't know whether that's job security or, or what it is, but it, it is happening. And I think it's due to the dynamic uh, nature of agriculture. It's always changing and moving in this direction, that direction. And so we, we've got issues. But I'm listening to people speak here today that are in office to make a difference, and I am confident that we do have the, the people in the U.S. Congress, the U.S. Senate, uh, the North Carolina Senate, and the North Carolina House to be able to solve these problems just as we have in the past. Uh, we have continued to be uh, very vibrant in agriculture, uh, and I have to look at things with uh, the, the glass being half full. I'm standing here today. This year, I didn't go through a Hurricane Matthew. Uh, this year, I didn't go through wildfires in the mountains that uh, devastated uh, many of our western areas. So in that regard, it's been a better year. And also, uh, we had good production on our crops in North Carolina this year, and even though uh, commodity prices are still in the basement. Uh, our animal agricultures remain strong. So uh, you've heard me say that I believe we can be a $100 billion industry by the year 2020, uh, and I still believe that. Uh, even with the issues that we see out there, there, there's kind of a roadmap that if we follow, I think we will continue to grow ag in this state, uh, even with the issues we have in front of us. And, uh, Larry mentioned immigration reform, and, and that is a big, big issue for every segment of agriculture that we have, not only in North Carolina, but in the nation. Uh, we took a trip, Larry and I and some others took a trip to uh, California in June, and I had never seen Western agriculture, but it's evident that it runs on two things, and that is uh, it's got to have a labor supply and it's got to have water. And if you've never seen it, it's absolutely amazing the, the amount of productivity there is out there. But the labor shortage has hit out there. Uh, it, uh, I was recently reading about Oregon and Washington and their, their problems with labor shortages. So we're at a critical mass, and this has got to be done. I did have the opportunity to sit down in front of uh, President Trump, Vice President Pence, and uh, uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue, and discuss many issues that we have in agriculture. And uh, the president, I think, understands this. Uh, and the reason I say that, he said, you know, I visited wine country in uh, California, and I understand that there is labor shortages. They are real, and we've got to fix it. So the, the rhetoric that you hear uh, in the press and the rhetoric you hear even out of the administration is, is I think, a negotiating point. And the same thing with the trade deals. You, 
Sometimes to get a good deal, you've got to, to negotiate from a, a very hard uh, stance, and I, and I hope that's what's happening because trade is another major way that we're going to get uh, to grow to this $100 billion. The, the roadmap that I talked about uh, involves the future of ag and agribusiness in the state, and, and we're focusing on one of the areas of food manufacturing. Uh, I've talked about this for several years now, starting with the governor's task force on food manufacturing, but we've actually uh, been able to take some, the study that we did jointly with NC State University and start to move this forward. And one of the recommendations was that uh, we needed a kind of an innovation center to draw food manufacturing to North Carolina, and thanks to the support uh, the legislature this year. Uh, we've been able to move forward with that at the Kannapolis campus, and I'm really excited about this. This uh, is going to be designed in a way that uh, no other state has done it, uh, and it is designed to let people know across the country that we in North Carolina are focused on food manufacturing, innovation primarily, uh, and I, we think what this is going to do is it's going to enable us to grow more specialty crops in North Carolina, and have them processed right here in North Carolina and get the whole ball of wax. And, and that's kind of the roadmap we're going to follow. Uh, and we've been successful, I think, already. There's a tremendous amount of effort uh, been put into this, but we have interest already uh, in this uh, initiative. And, and Dean Lenton may uh, talk about this more. But uh, the study said that if we followed through with what could be done with food manufacturing, uh, it could be $10 billion in economic impact to the agribusiness economy of North Carolina. So if we're at 84 now and this comes into play and we do it right, uh, you know, we're moving closer and closer to that $100 billion uh, industry that we all want. But also the study said that it was going to create jobs in rural North Carolina. And uh, I don't know how paying the jobs will be, but uh, I do know there are areas of North Carolina that desperately need jobs. There's population moving out of rural North Carolina because the jobs aren't available. So this is a major, major initiative. Uh, if we're going to raise things here in North Carolina, we've got to be able to sell them. Uh, and international markets is the place that we are focused. Uh, and I wanted to give you an example, and I wrote this down so I didn't uh, misquote it, but we focused on uh, Scandinavia uh, as a, uh, a place that we could sell sweet potatoes recently. And so far, we're up 3,000% in Norway, 479% in Finland, and 83%, 839% uh, in Sweden. So international marketing does work, and we're continuing to, to focus on that. One of the things that we're going to do uh, after first of the year is we're going to take a steady mission to Brazil. And I've never been to Brazil. Larry, I, I suppose you have before, but I, I've never been down there. But uh, they're our pr primary competition in, a many, in many ways uh, in the world markets. And we need to see what's going on down there and make sure that we understand what the competition is. I had people say, well, you know, I was down there 10 years ago. Well, you know, why should I go back? 10 years has been a lifetime in agriculture with all of the changes in technology and the things that have gone on. So I think we do need to understand what the competition is and figure out ways to beat the competition. I mean, that's what a world market's about. So we're, we're going to do that. Uh, we did something this past year that I'm very proud of. Uh, we set up the Industrial Hemp Commission and started to grow industrial hemp in North Carolina. And I've got to, I've got to say that I have been skeptical uh, about the, the building an industry uh, based on industrial hemp. But there are a lot of good things that have happened. Uh, the commission did uh, uh, license 103 growers this year to grow with industrial hemp. We grew about 1,900 acres uh, this year in North Carolina under a pilot program that is overseen by NC State University and NC a and State University. And we also had uh, 179,000 square feet of greenhouses that were growing industrial hemp. So we're after, off to a fast start. In fact, uh, as far as the nation's concerned, we had more growers and more acres in the first year than any other state in the, the nation uh, as far as industrial hemp is concerned. 
My skepticism has always been, where's the market? But what we've also seen is we did have uh, 34 uh, processors licensed under the Hemp Commission to process, further process hemp into products that can be sold. Uh, and that is going to be, in a lot of ways, focused on uh, the extraction of CBD oil that uh, seems to become very popular, although, according to DEA, it is still illegal. So there are a lot of hurdles still out there. Uh, is this an issue that could be addressed in the Farm Bill? Absolutely. But dealing with DEA when their attitude is industrial hemp is still marijuana uh, as far as the law is written, it's very, very difficult. And, and they threw up many, many roadblocks to be, us being able to do what we needed to do in this pilot program. But I would call this first year a success. Uh, and we're always going to be looking for new crops to grow in North Carolina, new initiatives. In fact, uh, we're going to approach the legislature about an initiative in the department uh, for new crops and new technology in agriculture. So we're going to continue to look to the future to be successful and uh, continue to build on the industries we have here. The, the uh, animal industries are very, very strong in North Carolina and expanding. That, that's a good thing. We have a beer and wine industry in North Carolina that is exploding. Uh, the wine industry is almost a $2 billion uh, economic impact industry. We now have 215 uh, craft breweries in North Carolina, many of them trying to use North Carolina agricultural products. So hopefully that's going to turn into a, uh, a brand new industry to, uh, to really lead us in the future. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the Farm Bill, and I just mentioned uh, what the Farm Bill could be, might be, but uh, it's important, very important. Uh, but I feel very confident that we will come out with a Farm Bill that's going to be workable and advantageous to, uh, to agriculture, and we're going to work very closely with Farm Bureau uh, here uh, in North Carolina, and I will work through the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture uh, but the key is our representation in Washington, and, uh, and I can say that not only are the members responsive, their staff is very, very responsive in trying to do what's good for us, and that, and that makes me feel, feel confident. But there's another key uh, to the puzzle, and that is the White House. But Ray Starling, my former attorney, is the, the president's uh, advisor on ag and trade, so uh, he's sitting right there, and knowing Ray, uh, he's going to do what's right for us, and, and that, that's something maybe we haven't had as good in the past as we've got it right now. But uh, everything's good. Uh, the future, I still feel, is very rosy uh, for ag and for our young folks in agriculture. And I, and I just recently taught a class with uh, Dean Linton at NC State University, and I can tell you I walked away from teaching that class very confident uh, and the future of agriculture because of the quality of the young people that we have that are interested in agriculture and are going to be the future leaders in, in ag in North Carolina. So thank you for the uh, opportunity, Larry. We're going to continue to have these strong partnerships in North Carolina that are, are what's going to be our strength. Uh, I've never seen a time when everybody in ag and agri agribusiness is pulling together in one direction, and quite frankly, we don't have any choices. We're such a minority that if we don't stick together, uh, the old saying is that you know, we're going to hang separately. So we're going to do that. I thank you for crafting uh, policies that will move North Carolina forward and, and doing it from a grassroots level. Uh, and I want to thank uh, especially Senator Jackson for his leadership. Uh, and he and I carry on a lot and joke a lot, but when it comes down to ag, it's all serious business. And you heard all of the things about the Farm, uh, the farm Act and the things we've done, but it's made a difference. Uh, and when it comes budget time, I depend on him on the Senate to, uh, to carry the department's budget. We've already had uh, meetings about uh, that in the coming years. So uh, these relationships, are really, really important, and thank you, Larry, for being a big part of that.